welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be explaining active transport and osmosis. Now, I'll start off with active transport. Now, as we looked at before, diffusion happens and it allows materials to move into our cells, and diffusion happens from a high to a low concentration. So, in this example, diffusion, the particles would move from this side to this side because there's a higher concentration here than here. Now, in this example, we're going to use an example of getting a material into our cells. So here's the material, these black dots. This side is inside the cell, this side is outside the cell. And they're separated by a partially permeable membrane. Now all partially permeable means is it allows some material through, but not others. So in this example, diffusion, it would occur this way. But active transport allows the particles to move from this side to this side. So that would be active transport. But active transport, it's important to remember, it requires energy. That's the key point. So active transport requires energy, and this energy is um, provided by respiration. Now, why is active transport important? Well, let's think about it. Imagine we're absorbing maybe glucose or amino acids in our small intestine into our bloodstream. If they just move by diffusion, it'll reach a point where there's the same amount in our bloodstream and in our intestine. Okay. So what active transport does, it provides some energy to allow us to absorb those last few molecules to get them into our body so we can use them. So active transport requires energy and it moves particles from a low to a high concentration against the concentration gradient. So, now look at osmosis. Now what osmosis is, is it's the movement of water from an area of more pure water to an area of less pure water. And obviously it's really important we get water into our cells, as you know, we're between 60 and 70% water. So, what does it mean, more or less pure? Now, in this example, we're going to use sugar as my example of something that will make water less pure. So, water would be unpure if other materials are dissolved in it. If I had a cup of water with nothing dissolved in it, that would be perfectly pure. So, in this example, my sugar, the red particles, are dissolved in the water, which are the little black dots. Now, as you can see, this side is less pure, as it has a higher concentration of sugar dissolved in it. This side is more pure. So what's going to happen is water is going to move from the more pure side to the less pure side. This way. When I say water, I simply mean these little black dots that represent our water. And that's osmosis. So the more pure the water is, the more chance there is of the water moving from there to an area where it's less pure. And again, this occurs across a partially permeable membrane, which is indicated by my dotted line up through the middle of this example here. So that's osmosis. Finally, you need to know a little bit about sports drinks and what they contain. So sports drink uh, contains sugar, ions and water. Those ions would normally be sodium or potassium. So Na, sodium or potassium ions. And we lose these during exercise. So for example, when we sweat, we lose these salts in our sweat and we lose water. And we also use up sugar during exercise as we use it for respiration. So sports drinks contain these to allow us to replenish our stores of these materials. Um, it's really important for our cells because our cells have to have the right water, sugar and ion balance to work properly for the chemical reactions to take place in our cells. If we don't have the right balance, then they won't function properly. Okay. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Rushcliffe Bio. Thank you very much.